This is the steam juicer that I have. Some important things that you want to consider when you are purchasing or considering purchasing a steam juicer is what is it made of and what is the capacity. Otherwise, they pretty much all work the same. I really, really recommend that you get one that's stainless steel. Besides the fact that it's rust proof, um, there is a little bit of debate going on whether or not using an aluminum or aluminum cookware leads to aluminum toxicity and that's something that you can look up further and decide if you're willing to take that risk or not. The aluminum ones are cheaper but if you just get a smaller stainless steel one like I have you can get by. So mine is nine and a half quarts and um, so it's measuring your uh, container for the, the fruit. So mine is nine and a half quarts and mine is, is of the smaller sizes available. And it was because I was on a budget and I and even though the aluminum ones are cheaper, like I said, I I want the best for my family, so if there's question of, question on whether or not it's safe, I don't even want to go there. This one there's no question about it, so so this is what I chose and I highly recommend that you would also choose stainless steel, but aluminum is available and it is cheaper and you can afford a bigger capacity but how I get by on my smaller capacity is I, I will just when you first put it in the level obviously it was all the way full and it shrinks and I just throw some more on top or I empty it out and refill it so you can get by with a smaller one you just kinda have to do more I guess if you don't want to be troubled with filling it as often that that you would buy the bigger one. So I'm making cherry juice and I'll show you the juice. This is cherry juice down in here. This is a 20 quart stock pot. This is a steam juicer. It works a little differently than than the juicers that just blend everything up. Basically how this works is the bottom layer has water. So the water is boiled and it steams up through the second layer which is the juice collection layer and then the third layer has a uh, tray or colander. Colander, yes, that's the word I'm looking for. Okay, and then you put your fresh produce right in and you pop the lid on. So the steam goes up and then it goes into the colander and it, you know, releases the juice which goes down through the colander into the juice collection and then out through this little tube into my collection container which is a 20 quart stock pot. After I get all of the juice I want, I can then can this to preserve it for years. So let me try and show you a little bit more what this looks like. I'm probably going to have to go get my tripod and my gloves because everything's really hot. I do need to refill this bottom water container about once every hour or so. So you can see that's full of water. And here is where you can see the juice is pulling up and it's steaming my camera. But that little cone, the steam is coming up through there and into the top layer where the fruit is. The great thing about this type of juicer is that you can put all your fruit in with pits and stems and all. This works great for grapes especially because grapes are really a pain if you're going to just squeeze the juice out. So this is how I make my juice. I will show you some of my juices that I made last year. Using the same juicer, these are some juices that I made last year. This juice was made on August 25th. This is apple peach. 
This one was made on August 27th. This is Plum. This one was made September 13th. This is Tomato Juice. So this, um, it's very interesting color, really, and, and it was kind of an experiment, but I used this in place of vegetable stock for making soups because it's not a sweet juice. But this is what the juice of the tomato looks like. And then I use uh, what's left of the tomato that's sitting in the top of the colander to make sauce with or tomato paste. So I used every part of that tomato. <laughs> um, okay, so the reason why I have everything written, every um, the date and everything on top is because these are going into the fair. Last year I won best of class and lots of blue ribbons on my canned goods, which I actually win money for. And on my canned cherries I won um, $125 worth in gift certificates. And also, if you see some of my other videos, you see that I dehydrate things. I also won a best of class for my garlic and good beef jerky recipe. So aside from preserving food, it's really fun to put this stuff in the local fair because I do it anyway and all they do, well the cherries are on display for a year in a restaurant right now and uh, I'll get them back this summer for the cherries I made last year. But it's really fun because I do this anyway and I'm able to, you know, just make a little bit of money back. So every October I'll get a check for, you know, whatever, depending on what ribbons I, I win and what places I come in and so on and so forth. So there's, there's a lot more fun in it when you um, take it to your local fair and you win ribbons and stuff. When your juicer starts to really slow down and you're satisfied that you've gotten the, the most juice that you're going to get from your fruit, Bring your juice to a boil and you want to have it at a rolling boil for five minutes. Now my juice has been boiled for five minutes so what I'm doing is I'm bringing my water bath canner to a boil. While I do that I'm going to pour my juice into my quart size mason jars. My canning water is still coming to boil and I just have a little bit of simmering water here that I'm going to use to heat my lids for a couple minutes. This um, warms the gumming and helps it seal. Over here are my quarts of juice. I'm just going to go around the rim and make sure that there's no sugar or anything with the damp towel, damp clean towel. They're very hot too. Okay, great. Now that my canner is at a boil, I'm going to start putting these jars of juice in here. And this is how you can your own stuff at home. Alright, there we go. Now I have to lower it in and make sure that they're all submerged in water. Which they are. So now I'm going to cover them up and I'm going to boil them like this for 15 minutes. Okay, and that concludes my juice making for the day. Now I just have to take these out. And I'll hear the seals pop. And this juice will be enjoyed by my family over the next year. In addition to the all of the other juices I will be 
doing. Last year I did 150 quarts of juice, but the thing about this juice is that it is concentrated. So um, if you were to drink it as it is, it would be really thick, and some people like that. And I don't sweeten mine at all either because I just prefer it unsweetened. I think that the juice comes with enough natural sugar that I don't need to add anymore. But some people prefer to sweeten it. I don't. Anyway, um, I when I fill up my container, I fill up a two-quart pitcher with one of these full and then one full of water. Or I have a four-quart sun tea container. Oh, did you hear the one pop? They're getting, they're sealing right now. And I use the four quart one with, with two and then two of water. So this is my juice. These are my first six juices for the year. I'm going to get a, a marker and I'm going to write what they are on the top. They are cherry, cherry juice. I usually like to mix my different juices together usually apple mixes well with everything so another thing that you can do with your juice if you don't want to make jams or jellies right away you can reboil you can open this reboil it add sugar and pectin and make jam or jelly actually because it's juice jam would be from the the fruit but uh here we go cherry yay i'll do the rest later when they're when they've cooled down but this is how I make my own juice at home. It's been a really long time since I bought any juice in the store. Um, sometimes I do because I don't get a lot of cranberries. So, let's see. And you can see, well this is a good one for the fair. There's a, the level supposed to be within a quarter inch of the top for judging. So this one will probably go in the fair, and I'll just look at the rest of them later. But there we go. That's my juice made in my steam juicer from cherries. The all of the uh, cherries that have that the juice came from are in here, and I'm just gonna put these out and let the birds pick it down. They really like that. There's a lot of good fiber and stuff left for them. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed seeing how juice is made, and maybe you'd like to preserve your own juice sometime. Uh, before I go, one way, if you don't have your own trees to pick fruit from, one great way to get fruit really cheap is to go to your farmer's market and ask your farmers what kind of fruit do you have, what kind of fruit trees, when are they ripe, what do you sell, what are your bo uh, prices for the box, Will you? when will you have it, and so on and so forth, exchange information, and you can save yourself a lot of money and do this yourself and get stuff that doesn't have any preservatives or chemicals or you know anything like that or sugar even if if you just can't have too much sugar that's a great reason too okay thanks for watching goodbye